Hello everyone, it's Bank Holiday Mon- uh, no, not Monday, Bank Holiday Weekend, end of May 2020. Um, I've kind of lost track of what I'm doing with the videos, but I thought I'd just tell you fresh, and this will be the start of a new video, I guess. Um, the last one, I think, was digging around in this boot floor. I took out all the sound deadening material degreased it all and then I've chopped out the rusty bits two big patches to put in that area grew largely but it, I mean, it wasn't really bad metal but it was pitted so I thought meh if I'm going to do one patch I might as well make it bigger and get rid of all the rot then in other news I was wrestling with this quarter window I got the thing out and found a big chuffing hole which was very, very annoying for two reasons. One is it's just another thing to weld up. The other one is that it's damn close to that patina line, which is like one of the things I was trying to preserve is, you know, I usually hate rat look cars because I think it's a waste of a car, but really because this fits with the character of this car, it's never gonna be a concourse resto because it's already been brutalized by losing its original engine and having a big V8 shoved in it instead. But I think that's cool. So I was trying to keep all this patina. Unfortunately, by the time I've welded onto there, that will probably be lost and burnt off. That bit will probably be kept, but that bit will be lost. Um, this is also quite a complex repair to do because you've got three pieces of metal coming together. You've got this outer skin, which is spot welded to a return there, or which should be there. You've got this bit, the speaker cover area, which comes up to there. And then in the middle or joining down there is the actual inner skin for the wing like so um, so my plan will be when I get there and I'm not going to do this right now but my plan will be to stitch weld those two panels back together so those two are then joined nice and strong and then I'll make a return to go in here like so and then I'll have to make the new bit to go on top over there we've got a similar problem up here this had rusted i was originally just going to put a fillet in the middle then i realized that the panel behind had rusted and then i realized the gutter was pretty past it as well so i have chopped the gutter off chopped that bit out and now i'm working out how best to go back to repairing that um, on the other side of the car it's not so bad but it's still gonna need repairs fortunately i think all of this uh, i don't know i'll have to attack it properly in a minute but um gonna have to repair this bit probably in the same manner as the other side this bit can probably all be saved and then a hole will need to be filled here um, i need to attack it with the wire wheel to see quite how bad the rust is i'm not worrying about that at the moment you might wonder why i've gone from doing the lamp panel to the boot floor and then to that window but the problem has been that every time i work or I, I knew every time i worked on that area all the rust just drops through and comes out down here so there's no point um doing anything here until at least the rust had been cut out so now the rust's cut out that can sit and wait gonna do the boot floor now put the rear lamp panel in then I will fix this bit, and then before I close up that bit, I can, um, yeah, all the welding spatter or whatever will have dropped through, clean that out, weld that on. Then we should be ready to move to the other side of the car. So that's a bit of a debrief of what's going on. Um, and as I said, I think in a previous video, I've really got to motor now, so I'm not going to do detailed videos on welding and stuff. I'm just going to get the hell on with it. So, see you in about, I don't know, an hour maybe. I uh, don't know how long that's taken, but I've made one patch to go in there. I've dressed the recesses in the boot floor smooth, just where this patch goes on. Obviously, this should have a fluting through it up to about there to match that one. <coughs> I'm not really bothering with that, I'm just getting it done. <coughs> That is the paddle for that side. That needs a bit of a bend in it. It'll go in two, and um, so now I'm just going to weld it all in.
that's one big patch in and done what was quite nice was i could do it almost as a butt weld um so there's no real seam on the underside Ugh. which i would show you but have i got another light here oh i'm really fed up of working in this shitty workshop i'm poisoning myself and it's a grind but basically you can see there's no lip there that's just burnt off on the seal and when that's rubbed down i could if i could really be bothered put a tiny skimmer filler in by the time it's texture painted you will never see it hopefully you can hear what i'm saying i'm still half wearing my mask anyway got to do that one now same process beat that bit flat uh so that my panel will fit in nicely put a bit of a bend in weld it degrind everything de-rust it again paint it put the rear panel in sounds easy didn't it <coughs> right so i've got the two patches in there happy with them that's a blister of rust where there is a bracket for the suspension hanger on the underside of the boot floor water's got in and rusted the two apart so i've picked off the top filled it with uh, hydrate 80 that can go off that i've put a tiny bit of hydrate 80 around it doesn't really need it and now i'm going to paint the whole boot floor with the uh, bonder primer and i've said it a load of times before but stuff just looks good when it's painted all one color that is a really really lovely boot floor it might look ugly as sin at the moment but um i'm happy with it the other thing is that uh, these are the sound indication pads that I've bought. Probably should have got this out before. Or let's switch the camera on. But these are like the sound deadening acoustic bitumen pads. So that will be all over the top of that. So these horrible welds you see will all disappear. Right, while that is going off, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. Just had a monumental rain shower. Barry Bunny is now cowering down there behind that bush. I don't think he knows that I can see him. Barry isn't that clever. Anyway, um, oh, I'm out of breath. I'm prepping the lamp panel. There's a few more jobs to do in the boot, but I'm still waiting for that paint to go off. So I'm using my Clark punch tool. <coughs> Not very easy one handed just to punch out the plug weld holes. So I shall continue to do that. I've got to do a long hole of the bottom lip and then a few other tactical ones. lip prevents me from getting the uh, beading tool in there so it might be able to slide it in that way I'll have an experiment the good news is that I can get to some of them it just takes a bit of effort to get the tool in and positioned but I will persevere well I've done the ones I could get to but unfortunately where the flange got taller I couldn't get the tool in so I have just um, well got to resort to drilling them by hand and again I won't bother showing the process because it's boring jobs are good and all of those are now drilled all the ones along the bottom I've drilled out to about five and a half six mil the ones down here I've left standard size just gonna put a bit of zinc paint along there so that when it welds it all pulls back together makes good metal just when you think you make progress I thought well I was prompted and I kind of figured um, 
I should probably repair that bit before I put the rear panel in, otherwise I won't have very good access. So I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll just cut top skin off, that'll reveal a bit of metal to clean up, and then I'll uh, put a plate in. Wrong! We have about, I don't know, six, seven mils worth of filler in there. I don't know why, because the, that is perfect metal. I haven't sort of touched that. That is all good metal, none of that is filler. All the way from there, all the way round is great. That is good metal. There's a hole there, we know about that, and I can patch that from the far side when I rebuild that corner. But I actually have no idea what's going on in here. So I'm gonna put the camera down and continue to poke and basically probably smash it with a chisel and a hammer to work out where the good metal ends or starts, probably up here somewhere. Uh, really annoying. Right, it's starting to make sense. On the back side of here is the rig reinforcer for the tie down strap or lashing point thing with the bracket. This is the original internal skin of the wheel well. Water's got in between the two and pushed the two apart. Somebody has cut the rot out and then just gobbed the whole load with filler, which is not ideal. So what I'm gonna do is cut around here up to these spot welds, clean all that out, then put a plate on from this side and plug weld through onto that reinforcer. Then I'll seal all the way around it. We should be good to go. We are winning. So that's the back side of the reinforcer. That's all really good metal. The boot floor where it joins it is perfect, which is really good. Most of the wheel wheel is really good. So I'm just gonna make a panel that sits in there. It's gonna be seam welded along here, along here, along here, and then plug welded through onto that. But first off, I'm, while I'm making the panel, the paint all that in uh, um, Hydra 80, so that could be doing its stuff while I'm fannying about making the next patch. This is speed welding fabrication. That is the patch. I've drilled big holes in this. These are like seven and a half mil because that has um, a thickness of about two and a half or something stupid like that. And as I've labored the point many times before, if I'd left them at like five mil, by the time I'd filled in the, the hole with a pool of weld, there would have been no heat penetration into that and it just wouldn't have stuck, it would just, you know, ping apart. So by having those larger, have I just, uh, what a spastic, I've painted the wrong side, never mind. Um, yeah, by having those holes larger, there's more time for the world pool to um, allow heat penetration into that panel behind. So I'll smash that in there, tack it in a few places, beat the hell out of it until these bits are in close contact with that panel behind, put the welder on really hot, weld the hell out of it, and then um, hopefully be able to do a nice seam around the edge. I might just do stitches, I'm not sure yet. Um, it's really quite difficult to get access into here because of 
uh, uh, access for cleaning, I mean. Just I don't really have any pointy scrapey things that I've run out of bristles on my wire brush thing. So consequently, it's not going to be tidied up in there as much as I would have liked before welding, but uh, should still be able to weld it. Wish me luck. Not gonna lie, that is not the prettiest job. The problem is that there is sealer on the underside of the car, which is burning and coming up through. There's the remains of the original sealer between this panel and that panel that was brushed in, and I just cannot get that out. I was hoping that I could burn it out, but although I can, the debris stays in there and just reignites. So what I've done instead is basically done really horrible nasty stitches through here you're not going to see them because that'll all be filled with seam sealer but um the important thing that's strong it's double skinned again this will clean up okay uh and it's kind of in there um but this is you know diy home styly restoration if I was doing like a super super nice car you'd probably chop all of this out clean the flanges off rebuild that bit and put the towing eye back on that's kind of what I did with the diesel but the diesel was so far gone in this area it all had to come out anyway whereas this car is actually quite good so in a nutshell that's on and done I'm gonna sand that off probably soak the hell out of it with um, red oxide again or bonder primer I'm gonna Tosh a patch over that bit as well and then I can start putting the rear lamp panel in which is kind of my aim for today anyway um, yeah not my best day but um, it's solid enough patchy thing made that's all rust treated and then zinc painted so you just got to weld that in now suddenly looking much better now it's painted only we shall know the horrors that were behind there <clears throat> especially by the time it's seam sealed it's got boot carpet in it's got sound deadening it's got wooden panels above here carpet over that so you will never know which is good right uh i'm going to clear out all the shite that i've put in there and start doing the thing that i've been looking forward to for ages which is mocking up the rear panel to go back in yippee bored you with this before these never fit great the only thing I care about is that line there everything else can take a running jump so long as that's good all of this bit gets hidden so you can see when you take this out these never line up um, so that one looks really nice there one thing I forgot to do which is quite annoying is I forgot to trim off that little return there um, which I need to do which means this whole panel is gonna have to come off again anyway 
this end is looking quite good too the only weird thing is this panel is more vertical than that one that one sort of curves in i can't really do anything about that because i could try and get in there with the pliers and lift that all up but this is preventing me from doing so when the light's in you don't really notice it because it's down there so it's not a game changer not a big deal fits nicely along the bottom as well which is a relief because obviously i take a big lumps out of that welded new bits in and i was jumping up and down on it as well which probably wouldn't have helped matters there is a dent there but i don't really care uh, i can't get to the back of it to dress it because that's where the reinforcing is down here for the um courtesy light the boot latch and all of that assembly so i can't get to the back side to knock it forward so that will just have to be filled if indeed i do anything with it that hole needs to be welded up because on a series one and a half or series one you only have the rear badges to about there this is a later panel for a series two car the only difference on the whole thing is that it has that hole uh i'm gonna what am i gonna do i really need to get that bit out i'd like to be able to do that without taking this rear panel off but i suppose ugh. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet and just take the panel off again, trim that. Then I can make my final fannying about fit fit changes. Uh, I also need to untie the tailgate and just see how that fits. In fact, why don't I do that now? remember back to I don't know must have been two weeks now since I first chopped this thing up I made reference measurements on the tailgate that side was three mil to there ignore the fit of the tailgate as I said this thing fits like a sack of crap and the whole tailgate needs to go forward to make that fit um, so it was tight there I don't have my steel rule here I think I've buried it somewhere what have I done with that do I have it no I don't uh, anyway, this side we're expecting to be about 5 mil, so it's about right. So nothing crazy has gone on in terms of things moving. And um, yeah, looking like it's kind of back together already. I do like these cars. I just think they look cool. I love this shape. Uh, yes, it's a pain to lift shopping into the back, but who gives a crap? It's a badass car. Right. Whip the panel off, chop that bit out, put it back on, weld it on. Okay, done that. Um, the other thing I've done is I've lifted this panel over to the top of there. Ordinarily, this would be plug welded through onto here and then brazed in here. I'm gonna do it slightly differently. I'm gonna seam weld that, I'm gonna seam weld that, and then I'm gonna build my little return onto there. The reason I'm doing it that way is because this panel has had a bit of strength cut out of it anyway so if i seam weld it it'll just be a little bit nicer takes longer but it'll be a better job and then i can skim it with filler and then the water should run straight off and there's no chance of a seam opening up a water getting in same on this side uh, i had to chop quite a lot out of there to fix the rust problem uh, and i need to Put another bit of metal back in there if i'm talking funny it's because i'm still half wearing this breathing mask thing anyway um that's all about ready to go and i'm going to tack it in a few places just so it can't move
Right. I think I'm done for the day. It seems funny stopping a video or a day's work halfway through doing a job like this. But I'm tired and I can feel myself on the verge of having a little girly hissy fit. No offence little girls, but um, it's been really good progress. I have put some stitches in here. I've tacked there, there and there. That means that I can take all of the clamps out of the back side without this moving, hammer the flanges together and then that is where it gets spot welded. I don't know whether you can see this. Basically, spot welds on these returns. In the past, I've also stitch welded between that bumper reinforcer and this. And also, because I don't know how to braze, I braze, oh sorry, I don't braze, I seam weld that bit, but from the back side. Um, so that's all fully watertight. In fact, I might be able to do it from this side and then grind it smooth with, now I've got a finger sander or the Dremel. Same at this side, ouch. Um, that is a bit of a mess now. You shouldn't really have a finger hole there, but that can be sorted. Tack, tack, and a tack down here. But I'm happy with the finish of it all. I did have a mildly scary moment uh, because the boot floor was sitting up inside here. Uh, all I had to do was push it and it went boing. You might've heard that on the video, I'm not sure. So that will all go back in there together. And once again, we have a semi-complete looking non-rusty Rover SD1. Um, I've been chatting colour schemes with uh, the paint shop and the guys buying the car. Since that is rusty and it looks cool, the roof is going to be rusty. My preference is to make this tailgate rusty. The tops of the roof is kind of rusty anyway. And then it would kind of make sense if the middle was left kind of black and rusty. It'll make the tail lights shine up brighter and it'll make the chrome on the bumper look brighter. And I quite like the fact that it's a black center rear end because like TR6s and sort of performance American cars like Chargers and stuff like that, I think they had black rear